Hello, my name is Chronix and welcome to part two of my neuro based tutorial. Today we're going to be covering FX chains and modulation on our initial sound that we, cre we created in part one. If you haven't watched part one, go check it out now before looking at this one. Uh, that will tell you how to create the initial sound that we done. Uh, there's no right or wrong way when it comes to FX chains, just play around, see what happens. Uh, but I like to use a certain set of FX which I've built up over the years of practicing. Uh, I'll show you those now. So in part one we created this sound. It's quite a nice sound that we've got going there. Uh, so we've got our instrument rack with two instances of FM8 and one native instrument massive. We've got various parameters linked to the Macro 1 controller which gives it its modulation. Uh, from here we're going to build upon the sound and I'm going to start off by adding Ableton's own saturator onto the end of that. And I'm just going to turn that onto the, the sinoid fold and turn the drive up to just under two decibels uh, maybe the output down just a touch everything else I'm going to leave as it is uh, also I'm going to add a chorus onto that and I'm going to turn the dry wet up to a hundred percent gives it a bit more width so now we've got this kind of sound <coughs> sounds nice and full. From here I'm going to go into my external plugins and I'm going to add a Camel Crusher. Uh, it's quite a nice VST uh, FX. I'm just going to take the compressor off of that because it gives it too much punch that we don't want. Everything else I'm going to leave as it is so it's just giving it a little bit of tube distortion. Uh, just gives it a bit more power which now sounds like this. So that's what we've got so far. So we've got the initial sound that we created in part one and in this second part we're working on the FX chains and modulation. So we've added a saturator, a chorus and a camel crusher. And that's pretty much all I'm going to add to that. Uh, when it comes to modulations, we've, we covered quite a lot of modulation in part one. Uh, with the various parameters here all linked to the Macro 1 controller. Now, some people like to move all of these into the instrument rack and link various parameters onto the Macro 1, but I'm, I'm going to do it a slightly different way. I'm going to uh, control, sorry, shift and highlight these three. And then I'm going to group those into a separate instrument rack. So we've got two instrument racks, one with the synthesizers and the second one with the effects chains. And from here we can modulate these separately as well. So I'm going to click on map mode here and I'm going to link the dry wet of the chorus onto macro 1. I'm going to link the dry wet of the saturator onto macro 1 and if we just open up Camel Crusher we can click on the mechanical distortion and we'll link that as well. I'll just turn these down now. Turn map mode off. Uh, sorry we need that on still. So like I covered in the first part up here you've got the macro mappings uh, from here you can set the minimum and maximum values for each parameter. So the saturator dry wet we don't want going up to 
I'll put that to about 50 start it on about five same with the chorus I'm going to invert the chorus so it starts on about 60 ends on about 10 so now we've got the dry wet of the chorus the dry wet of the saturator and the mechanical distortion now we certainly don't want the mechanical distortion going up to 100 percent and take that down quite a lot to about 40 and I'm going to let that one start on zero so now that's quite a beastly sound so if I just shut down some of these so we can see what we're doing here okay lovely now from here I'm gonna link both of these controllers both of these macro ones I'm gonna link to my MIDI controller both on the same dial so if I click that and turn my MIDI dial that's that one linked and that's that one linked so they're both now linked to one controller on my MIDI controller so now we have when I hit a note and turn the dial they should both move in sync like so just going to go back to the map mode and take the mechanical down quite a lot because that's giving it too much punch and maybe the saturator as well we don't want too much movement on there that's a much better sound uh, from here finally once I've got those two linked together I'm just going to add some reverb onto there I'm going to bring the decay time down to about 600 and the dry wet down to about a quarter and just bring the pre-delay down all the way maybe bring that decay up a little bit dry wet up a little touch just a little bit more that's better so as you can see now for the modulation we've got a saturator, a chorus and a camel crusher distortion unit on our audio effect rack linked to macro 1 and then we've got all the modulations that we assigned to the instrument Rex Macro 1 from Part 1. Then both Macro 1 from the Audio Effect Rack and Macro 1 from the Instrument Rack are MIDI linked to one dial on my MIDI controller. So the one dial controls both macros. <laughs> And as far as FX chains and modulation, that is pretty much it. Join me in part three, where I'll be covering uh, automations, and also I'll be covering how to use this track with a drum beat next to it. Okay, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure as always, and I'll see you again in part three.